Hello everyone, my name is Dimple Agrawal. I am Assistant Professor from IMT College of Management. Today I am taking an online lecture on market structure. Before taking this lecture, I should, I should advise you to take this chapter very seriously because this is the most important topic of managerial economics. Now, moving forward our topic that is market structure, let's discuss what market is and what market structure is. So, market as we all know market is a place market is a place where the exchange of goods and services happen between whom exchange between whom buyers and sellers so market is a place where exchange of goods and services happen between buyers and sellers and there is two things the first is exchange and second is transaction okay when the exchange of goods and services happen with money it is known as transaction and what is market structure? So market structure is also the structure that allows buyers and sellers to exchange any type of goods and services and information. We can exchange these goods and services with the help of money, then it will convert into transaction. Okay. So before entering why market structure, why we define market in the different, different structures, why we dif differentiate to this, we first know what is the primary and the main goal or the main aim of any business. So the first thing that happens to a CEO or to the managing, uh, managing team is that to maximize their profit. Everyone in a firm wants to maximize their profit. So the first and primary goal of any business is to maximize this profit. And because of this aim, because of this goal, companies try to eliminate the competition. Okay, if there is no competition, then the whole demand is going to be served by me. Whole consumer base is mine. So being a business, mine as in being the business. Okay, so to fulfill this goal, motor companies motivate to el eliminate competition, increases the price and lower the quality of the product. So the question is why to lower the quality, not increasing that. Okay, so by lowering the quality, you are using the raw materials of low quality can say quality is a relative term so we can say in terms of texture in terms of uh, in terms of color in terms of durability sustainability that is the lower quality of raw materials when the quality of the raw material is low then your cost is low and when your cost is low ultimately your price is low okay so what happened in real life, if you are dealing in any commodity which is already present in the market, okay, there is a competition already in the market, then for dealing or for entering that market, for entering in the competition, you need the price to be at the low. You need the price to be at the low. If you are using the lower quality of product, you are your cost is low and ultimately your price is low it will give you a competitive edge it will give you a competitive edge to your product or to your firm and it is known as and typically it is known as penetration pricing but in penetration pricing it is not necessary the quality of your product is lower but the thing is your price should be lower than the competition so here we can say that to uh, eliminate the competition, first you are lowering the quality of your product to enter the market because if you are selling a pen at rupees 5 and the other person is selling the identical pen at rupees 10, so no one is going to buy a product which is, at, uh, which is of same quality at the higher price. Getting it? Okay, this is the example of penetration pricing. Now, why my, how market structure influences the firm to behave okay so there are five things pricing okay market structure tell firms what to price their product supply whether they want to control the supply or not barriers to entry where they want to barrier uh, restrict the entry of any new entrant efficiency and competition okay these are the these are the the type of market structure influences the firms okay on this on these parameters now, what are the determinants of market structure? On what basis we are distinguished distinguish between these market structure? The first thing is entry, freedom of entry and exit. Whether the firm's new entrants or the old entrants are free to enter or exit the firm. Is there any 
fees to enter the market or is there any penalty to exit the market the second thing is nature of the product whether the product is homogeneous or differentiated right here right now i should tell you what is the difference between homogeneous and differentiated product homogeneous are the product which are identical in identical you can't differentiate them or them or distinguish them by your raw, raw eyes okay like if we take example of pulses can you can you distinguish between the seeds of two seeds of one pulse like this is the different seed and this is the different seed by row eyes no you can't but in differentiated products you can dis differentiate or you can distinguish two products by a raw, raw eyes example you can differentiate between the samsung phone and the oppo phone by a raw eyes by just seeing on the features or the color or the pattern you can say that okay this is a samsung phone and this is only on the cameras as well okay back cameras okay this is the iphone this is the samsung phone and this is the oppo phone the third thing is control over supply and output. Control over supply and output. One sec. Control over supply, over price, supply. Okay. And the last one is barriers to entry. As we have already discussed, whether the entry of the new entrant is restricted or not. Are they free to enter or exit or they are restricted to enter or exit? Why it happens? We will going to discuss it with every other market structure okay so market structures are just are based on two things the first one is perfect competition and second one is imperfect competition perfect competition is also known as pure market whether the imperfect competition has three more comp markets in that the first is monopolistic market second one is oligopoly market and third is monopoly market okay so there are two competition perfect and imperfect perfect competition is also known as pure market or pure competition imperfect imperfect competition has three market in it the first is monopolistic market second is oligopoly market and third is monopoly market now we are going to discuss all these four markets perfect and these three markets three per markets of imperfect competition turn wise okay before moving towards this i should tell you that uh, looking at the gradient picture where number of firms are high to low if we are moving from left to right and firms influence of price level whether the firm it can influence the price or not is low to high from left to right okay the lower part of the gradient so it starts with perfect competition where the competition is at the highest point but the influence on the price level is low moving towards monopolistic competition here or as well the competition is high similarly relatively high than other two competition but the influence on the price level is low why we are going to understand that now oligopoly where the competition is low but influence on the price is high and monopoly where the competition is at the lowest but the influence on the price is highest okay so we are going to move if we are going to move number of firms then it's high to low and competition is from high to low but influence on the price level is low to high if we are moving from left to right it uh, goes like perfect monopolistic oligopoly and monopoly okay so now talking about perfect market now we are going to talk about perfect market let me adjust these things so you can see perfect market so these are the characteristics of perfect market the first and the foremost thing of perfect market is it does not really exit it is totally totally theoretical we build we as an economist build this market to generalize our laws to generalize our theories how they work in any market so this is a theoretical market we can't see the practical example of this market existed okay but if we want we can take some examples okay to understand this the second is the large number of buyers and large number of sellers okay the buyers are large and the sellers are large in this market in this competition third is the products are identical as we have already discussed what identical products are well-informed buyers and sellers buyers know the price why the prices are changing when they are going to change who all are the sellers who all are the competitions who all other buyers are the uh, the consumer knows everything about this market the, about the product about the market about the seller about the price they know everything so it uh, the buyers are well informed as well as the sellers 
and there is free entry and exit in the market there is no fees to enter the market and no fees to exit the market no government intervention government is not going to interfere and most importantly if we if we make this market to prove our theories why we are going to complicate our stuff by intervening by interfering with the government okay and to the next and the last and the most important thing is in this market the firms are price takers not price makers so how it is going to happen okay let's say the supply the total supply in the market is 1 lakh units of something 1 lakh units of any commodity and the number of suppliers is also 1 lakh because the numbers of buyers and sellers are large okay so on an average one seller is selling one unit of commodity okay 1 lakh units are supplied by 1 lakh sellers so on an average one seller is supplying only one unit of that commodity okay so in the near future if that seller denies to if that seller denies to supply the product so is there any influence on the overall supply no right 1 lakh minus 1 unit okay it is going to be 99999 units so that one seller is not going to influence the total supply that's why he can't he or she can't influence the price when any seller cannot influence solely cannot influence the total supply then they cannot influence the price that's why in this market the firms are price takers and not price makers for example can you see the difference between these two apples no right one sec can you see the difference between these two apples no they are exactly the same similarly can you see the difference between these two cons no right these are identical these are identical now moving towards imperfect competition moving moving towards imperfect competition so after perfect competition everything every competition is imperfect competition and imperfect itself means that products are slightly different they are differentiated products you can distinguish them uh, distinguish between them by your raw eyes as you can see you can distinguish between these two burgers yes or no you can easily distinguish between these two burgers yes or no right the crust is different the patty is different the cheese is different these two burgers can be differentiated by the raw eyes okay so imperfect competition means that the product is slightly different or differentiated product but in perfect competition we have the homogeneous or identical products okay now in imperfect competition we will start with monopolistic market okay so what do we understand by monopolistic market monopolistic market is similar to that of the monopolistic market is similar to that of the perfect market okay so there is only there are only two differences the first one is the products are differentiated and second one is monopolistic market there they are the price makers and not the price takers okay the why it happens if it is similar to the monopoly uh, sorry perfect market then why they are not the price takers and price makers let understand this okay there are a number the number of buyers and sellers are large here okay they are well informed as well but the products are slightly different okay differentiated products you can say whooper of uh, burger king and big magic big big mac of mcd okay these are the two differentiation uh, the differentiated products of burger whooper of burger king and big mac of mcd if you have if you ever have that or you can see the differentiate difference between these genes. Okay, these three genes they can be differentiated by the raw eyes uh, or based on their color, based on their uh, what we can say the waist size. Okay, everything is we can say that these are the different products. Okay, the entry and exit of is same like the perfect market. The entry and exit is uh, free okay each firm has a tiny monopoly because of the differentiation of their product okay if there is only one seller 
if there is only one seller in your area okay that product is differentiated okay if there is any one seller of kiwi let's say kiwi you are suffering from dengue and kiwi is the most important food you should have while you are suffering from dengue so you have only one seller of kiwi kiwi in your area okay there is no other seller so if one day that seller decides to decides to sell that product at rupees 100 okay you have you are in need that is the necessary product for you at that time so you are going to pay that 200 rupees instead of 50 that you can get anywhere else okay so at that at that particular point of time because of the differentiated product and because of somewhat tiny monopoly that person is the price maker and not the price taker so in monopolistic market it is similar to the perfect market but there are two major differences the first is products are differentiated and second one is in this market the firms are price makers and not price takers okay in monopolistic competition the second and uh, or we can say out of the context monopolistic market competes on the non-price competition price is not the only thing they are competing like as we can say when uh, three or four years back MACD used to give mac toys okay whenever you are ordering meal of some amount let's say uh, one one thousand or something they will they are giving you free mac toys and when you are collecting those five those mac toys like three or five mac toys they are giving you free meal free meal based on that okay this is the strategy this is the strategy advertising and give a give a strategy of mac way so in monopolistic market competitors use non-price competition not only the price competition like they are not competing over only over the price okay they can compete by advertising by creating different different advertising ad sorry giveaways and other promotions oligopoly market so as you can see in oligopoly there are only few dominant there are only few dominant or small number or, or uh, small number of large firms okay there are only few competitors okay in the market few firms okay what do you understand by few firms few firms means the number you can count on your fingers for example let's say telecom industry of india okay we have only three or four major players like airtel geo vodafone idea and bsnl the major players are only four you can count them in your now on your hand okay so there are only few number of large firms okay many firms may make up the industry hence price makers what happened or what is happening here let's say let's go back to our one lakh supply example so the total supply is of one lakh it is but it is instead of supplying by one lakh seller it is only supplied by four sellers okay four firms so on on an average one firm is selling twenty five thousand of the supply units of the commodity okay twenty five thousand if one day that seller because of the differentiated product that seller decides to not supply ticket to not supply in the market then twenty five thousand of that commodity is not going in the market people are going to plea to the seller to please sell us to please suppliers okay so that seller can influence the price if any seller can influence the price then they are the price makers and not price takers okay so many firms may make up the industry hence price makers you know how the price makers are high barriers to entry the entry because no one wants to lose their monopoly okay so if there are only four firms some and if with differentiated products they have the monopoly in their product so no one wants to destroy their monopoly no one wants to give away their monopoly so firms always always try to mainly mitigate the competition hence restricted the entry products could be highly differentiated branding or homogeneous known non-price competition same as the monopolistic market abnormal profits and high degree of interdependence between firms what is what is the mean of the high degree of interdependence between firms in olig oligopoly market the firms cannot just decide their price okay like let's say the price is uh, determined at rupees 100 by the firms like one commodity uh, let's say a commodity is selling by four firms and every firm each and every firm is going to 
sell that at rupees 100 one day firm a decides to sell that product at 110 would the firm b c d going to increase their price no they will not so the customer base of a is going to shift to b c and d okay now a got his lesson his or her lesson and it and he decided to sell the same commodity at rupees 90 one day so being the price makers b c and d will also decrease their price at 90 okay so the customer will remain intact of each and every firm that's why if one firm tries to manipulate the degree the rival rival firms will react accordingly okay if a tries to increase the rival firm will not increase and if a tries to decrease rival firm will also decrease their prices and keep the customer base in, intact that's why there is a high degree of interdependence between the firms so as you can see in the picture if we talk about the air uh, aircrafts okay so boeing and beluga are the two companies who are competing in the aircraft manufacturing industry okay so these are some examples few producers control the supply these are some examples of the oligopoly market like nestle and these are the products made by the nestle and uh, few producers are supplying and controlling the price okay now moving towards our last market that is the monopoly market monopoly as the name suggests monopoly means only one one and sole seller of that product okay for example in india ircTC a railways day bears for diamond and we can say microsoft we can say Apple, Apple not as a phone, but Apple as iOS software, Google as a search engine. So these are some examples of monopoly market. So there is the one thing, the seller is only one, the number of buyers are large, high barriers to entry as we have already discussed that no one wants, no firm wants to lose their monopoly. So they try to mitigate the competition by restricting the entry. Firm controls the price or output or supply. For example, if one day IRCTC is going to rise rise their high, uh, sorry, prices, rise their prices. So they can because there is no other supplier. There is no other supplier of railway tickets. Okay. So they can. They are the price makers. One supplier is supplying the whole quantity. So if one day they decide not to supply, people are going to plead, please supply us, please supply us, and charge the prices. Okay. Whatever you want. So if one supplier can influence the supply, they can also influence the price. So they are the price makers, abnormal profits in long run, possibility of price discrimination. So now understand what is price discrimination. Price discrimination is a phenomena where seller is selling the same commodity to different customer base at different prices. For example, have you ever gone, gone to PVR? Okay, we, we all have gone to PVR. So in PVR, we have seen there are some uh, diamond seeds some platinum seeds and some gold seeds okay the first rows are the gold then the middle rows are the diamond and the last one are the platinum the charges or the services are same we are uh, we are seeing at the same movie we are in the uh, we are in the same ambient sitting on the same ambient sitting on the same chair but still they are charging the different price for the same experience for the same movie right so this is known as price discrimination there are different degrees of price discrimination first degree second degree and third degree this we will cover in different lecture now consumer choices are limit because limited because there is only one seller there is only one seller of that product so customers consumers do not generally have much of the options they are uh, on the limited choices that's why and press prices is excess of marginal cost okay prices are generally higher than their marginal cost okay examples as we have already discussed apple kindle google microsoft montana snow there are five types of monopoly the first one is natural second is government technic technology antitrust exemption monopoly and the last one is geographic monopoly natural monopoly exists as a result of the higher 
startup cost or infrastructure or material sometimes the materials and the raw materials and the machines the infrastructure is so high in cost that it is not possible for any new entrant to enter that market okay that's why these markets appear the, these monopoly appears in the market for example entergio and slesco government monopoly as we can say irctc is the example of this because government agencies are the sole provider of that product they are they are controlling the total supply they are controlling the price moving towards technological monopoly it occurs when company controls manufacturing methods or has right patents to exclusively produce that product for example ipad i apple has this monopoly or the patent to produce or technology to produce the ipads antitrust exemption monopoly is the companies uh, that are considering sporting events or exhibitions or are not a form of commerce thus do not has to be limited like uh, the companies who are in the sporting or the event that is the antitrust exemption monopoly for let's say in football we have nba geographic monopoly happens or it is a condition exists when in a local region in a local area or region there is only one company who is providing this so that service okay for example if you are going to a hill station and there is only one company who is providing you the uh, rail rope service or uh, who are providing the lounge service or the tree house services then this is the monopoly based on the geogra geographic okay so last uh, after completing all the four markets we can say that uh, two competitions and four markets we can say that the degree of competition between these markets lie like this in monopoly market because there is only one firm the competition is low okay in olig oligopoly market because there are only few, few firms who are competing between between each other uh, within each other then the competition is medium and average because in monopolistic and pure pure market pure market structure there are large number of sellers large number of sellers who are selling the differentiated products for monopolistic and homogeneous product for pure market the competition is very high it is highest in the pure market because the products are homogeneous the products are identical and the num and the num sellers number of sellers is large okay so degree of competition lays like this monopoly market oligopoly market monopolistic market and pure market where in monopoly the competition is at lowest in oligopoly competition is at average monopolistic the competition is slightly lower than the pure but in pure market the competition is the highest because of the homogeneous product so this is the end of the lecture thank you so much and thank you for bearing with me uh, have a nice day bye bye